tonight. Um, we're here to talk about um, the Mountain View Cemetery and Prospect Park uh, Cemetery expansion. Um, we have a we do have an agenda tonight, but I want to let everybody know this is informal. You know, so as we go through our presentations, please feel free to raise your hand at any time, ask any questions. Um, hopefully, everybody signed in. Um, you can also leave your email also, um, and we're glad to give you updates, or you can send us, if you send to have any questions after the meeting. Um, so I'll introduce the team and kind of, and, and uh, then we'll, we'll get started. So with us tonight, we have uh, Ricardo Ostrich from BSC Group. He's the designer. His team is the, des the design team for this project. Um, we have Jeff Holland, Assistant, um, Director of Public Works. Um, Bill Stendrup and Mark Dew from Davy Tree, uh, Kevin Esposito, Parks and Cemetery Division Manager, and J Justin Dobson, he is the uh, Cemetery Program Coordinator. And my name is Keith Baldinger, I'm the Assistant Director of Public Works here. So again, Ricardo's pretty much gonna run the show here tonight, but feel free to ask questions at any time. We'd really like to make this a discussion to learn what um, the community would like to see here, how, they, how you feel about our design, um, all of that stuff. Any concerns you have, questions, tonight's the night. So, thank you. Uh, here we go. So, up to the agenda history of the project. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Uh, Jeff Holland, DPW Director. I'm just going to give you a, a brief timeline of how we got here and why we are here. Uh, this started probably prior to 1971 when the town was desperately looking for additional space for a uh, expansion of Mountain View Cemetery. Back in 1971 at the annual town meeting, the town defeated an article that would have expanded the cemetery to the north, which is, which is now the uh, Stone Meadow Farm subdivision. Um, that, again, that was defeated in 1971. Since then, the t or after that, the town started looking for other parcels. Uh, pro and in 1976, at the special town meeting, the town purchased what was then the Masonic Lodge or the Masonic Home. Uh, at that same town meeting, the, uh, town me the town meeting passed to create the Masonic Hospital Committee, uh, which had the task of looking at uses for that piece of property. Uh, they spent several years looking at it. Uh, through the next several town meetings, topics that or potential uses included cluster housing development, selling it to the housing authority, Shrewsbury Housing Authority, uh, a private restaurant, municipal pool, nine hole golf course, an office park with mixed housing, a nature center and elderly housing. That was what was identified in the 1977 uh, in a report. They came out with their final report in 1978, which after a lot of discussion with the Housing Authority, but unfortunately at that time Housing Authority could not get funding for uh, elderly housing, which they were going to use in the original Masonic home that was up there. Uh, unfortunately at that time, at least me reading the uh, inner reports, that building was in pretty poor condition at the time. And the committee, with agreement from the Housing Authority, uh, made a recommendation to town meeting, which was accepted in 1978, or I'm sorry, 1979, to, for, the, for the uses of that cemetery, or I mean, of the pros what is now Prospect Park, and I quote, land to be used for future cemetery expansion, an amount of land sufficient to allow for the future widening of Prospect and Boylston Streets, in the area required for the water department for the present and future storage tanks with the balance of land to be retained by the town for recreational use. And at the same, same town meeting in the same article, they appropriated the mon mon money to uh, demolish the building. Uh, now, since 1979, there's been quite a few other town meeting uh, um, possible uses for that property. 1970 or 1980 or 1971 the town actually defeated an article as an elementary school was proposed there 
1993, an article was passed to put the middle school at that location. But since then, the middle school was actually moved. I think that's where Sherwood is now. Uh, but in 1993, it was actually appropriated that parcel or to be used as a middle school. In 1997, uh, the, it was an article which defeated the, the, to actually sell it to a telecommunications company to make that a telecommunications field. Uh, in 2005, town meeting appropriated $25,000 for a cemetery expansion study. And then in 2006, while that study was be going on, additional work was done at, up at the top of the hill and a second tank was added and town appropriated and changed some of the area to for water purposes. In 2009, the master plan for the cemetery was completed by BSC, uh, a completely different version of what you're going to see tonight. That version had a traditional cemetery which had over 17,000 graves that went right up to Prospect Street, right to the property line of Merriam Ave, all the way down to Boylston Street, and it looked like Arlington Cemetery. That master plan was actually approved in 2008, but never went forward. I think we're fortunate that I don't, I'm assuming, Ricardo, you didn't do that one? No, it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I do have it upstairs, and it's, there's literally, it makes Mountain View look small because there's roads and graves everywhere. Um, how we got here now in 2019 at the annual town meeting, uh, town appropriated money for a second master plan of the cemetery. Uh, we did have several public unfortunately viral or virtual public uh, discussions on it that Ricardo uh, did attend uh, to look at this cemetery. Some of you may s see the plan that's similar to what we had discussed a couple years ago. Uh, but in, to, in 2020, we solicited uh, the proposal for BSC, which we'll see. And then again in 2022, the annual town meeting or a special town meeting appropriated the design for this park. And that's that what leads us to today. Uh, going back as early as 2019, we wanted a cemetery that was different than Mountain View. And after quite a few discussions, we've come up with a with design. Uh, it's still in the preliminary stages, but it, a design that I think will meet both uh, the uh, open space and the recreation uh, in the park and keeping that all in um, focus. Two things that we did when before Ricardo, uh, we wanted to have better uh, parking and access to the Prospect Park, which currently, as you know, there's really no parking there. So part of this is to provide a parking lot for Prospect Park. And the second is to provide a better uh, way to get from the sidewalk, which ends at, on Prospect at Spring Street, to be able to get a sidewalk that gets into um, the park from that intersection without having to walk on the road. So those were two of the biggest criteria, and then I'll turn it over to Ricardo to give uh, talk about the uh, actual master plan of as we move forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge uh, Davy Tree, the tree consultants uh, who are here with me today, and I think we're, we're very lucky, and I'm very lucky, to be working on a project with these folks because I think one of the things, this is a design that really puts the trees first, and so one of the things that uh, we did it, this past winter was conducted a, a full survey of the area that we're going to develop, and Davy Tree went through and analyzed those trees and categorized them on sort of, uh, you know, a good fair and poor trees, the different tree species, the number of invasives, the number of dead trees. And so we have a really good information to then go ahead and sort of inform the schematic plan you're seeing now. And I think to your point, I mean, we're still at the preliminary stage. And so this is why this kind of meeting is really important for us to have, to really be able to kind of understand, you know, and get input from uh, you folks about what you think 
uh, you know, of the process we have engaged thus far and where we are in this point. Do you want to say anything at this point from Davey Tree or are you going to wait until people ask questions? Oh, yeah, Do you have any comments or anything to add? Or? Uh, no comments other, other than if, if uh, folks want a, a brief history of who we are and, and uh, our involvement with other cemeteries, that's, that's fine. Or, Do you want to talk? Yeah, you might want to say that. I'd be more than happy yeah, to. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Bill Stendrup. Uh, um, myself and uh, Mark Dew with Davey. Uh, we're both certified arborists. Uh, we've both been with Davey since 2010. Uh, Davey was founded in 1880, uh, and one of the first uh, projects that uh, John Davey undertook was the rehabilitation of Standing Rock Cemetery in Kent, Ohio. So the company has a steep tradition in cemetery uh, maintenance, aftercare, and development. Uh, we're proud to be involved with this project, and working with Ricardo is fantastic in, in the town. So uh, we're re really pleased to be involved here. We also have our office in Shrewsbury on Industrial Drive, so we, we, we have some skin in the game too. So uh, we're, we're happy to be here. Uh, what we did is we assessed uh, about 2,300 trees, Mark, if, if, I'm, if I'm not correct there. And uh, really one of our mottos is that Nature and the built environment can coexist for the benefit of people and their communities, and we stand by that. So when we were tasked with assessing these trees, we took it quite seriously. Uh, and as Ricardo said, we, we have detailed information that we are more than happy to share about the trees themselves, what our discoveries were, uh, and, and uh, if there are any questions about those trees, we're more than happy to, to uh, field those. Yes, sir. Real quick question is, <clears throat> I, there are probably hundreds of trees in there. There are pink ribbons, green ribbons, yellow ribbons, pink spots, Correct. blue discs of metal nailed to them. Uh, could you, are all those trees slated for elimination, or is there some secret code? That That's a great, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's not a secret code, but it is a code. So. You're correct. All of the trees that we assessed received a tree tag for the purpose of inventorying them and knowing where they are and what they are and what their condition is. So throughout the planning phase, we can know exactly which tree we're talking about. And then when those trees were located, uh, they received a dot of paint. So none of that means anything at this point other than we looked at that, at that tree. Uh, so that's the purpose of the ribbons and the, uh, the tree tags on, on each individual tree that everyone is seeing. I would just add to that that the ribbons have been taken down. Oh, the ribbons have been removed. Okay. okay. Sir. Yeah. Um, I'm reflecting on a past meeting where I learned that there were some stipulations to leave this pretty much natural and untouched. And I think that is still standing. I think we refreshed our memory on this, but it's, I think it's even on the town hall website. But we're talking about coexistence, humans, and nature. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that having more trees is better in a growing population than having less trees? That's, it seems like an easily answered question, but. I, I, I am always in favor of more trees in the right place. And in our built environment, we have to take that into account. So uh, not every tree is going to be a value to a landscape. You'll have a number of invasive species trees, uh, pioneer species trees that are actually detrimental to the landscape. Trees that are in poor health, uh, maybe near walkways or other areas that uh, 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 people gather. Uh, so to, to answer the question, more trees, yes, in the right place. So um, I guess that would be my, my answer to, to that question. Many big cities put actually additional trees up so that they consume toxins. Correct, yeah. They, they sequester carbon, they take up storm water, uh, provide a lot of benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. So there's, there's 
county is spending some money on a climate study of some type, what should they can do for the climate? So is this tied together? So I, so I think the part that's tied together with that is that we're trying to make a sustainable cemetery, trying to save as much of nature as possible, much of the trees as possible to improve the climate. And like this gentleman said, you know, trees do have a lot of benefit to reducing carbon. So it is, it's part of, you know, our strategic plan, we call it sustainability, and this is certainly our approach with this cemetery. Uh, I mean, I think that um, one of the things that's really terrific about this project is that um, it doesn't happen very often where kind of a municipality or an agency, uh, very few of them in fact, actually take the time to doing this cataloging of the trees and really getting an understanding of what kind of value they have there. And I think that's really been done by the town of Shrewsbury thanks to the work that Davy Tree has done and it's been helpful to inform our approach to this design as well. So, and I, I should actually speak a little bit about kind of my background and my, where, where I come from. Um, you know, my background is really in, in sort of in horticulture and landscape architecture. So, um, you know, you're talking to the number one tree hugger here. So uh, my interest is in actually the, 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 if the current cemetery, you know, the part that I find most beautiful is the old part of the cemetery. There's beautiful old trees there. They're poetic and they really add a sense of calm and serenity to the space. The, the, the new part of Mountain View Cemetery, not so much. And so my goal is not to create a duplication of the newer part of Mountain View Cemetery, but something that is a little bit more evocative and responsive to kind of the, the living environment that already exists there. Uh, my background for over 20 years, I worked at a place called, worked with a place called Mount Auburn Cemetery, which is one of the premier cemeteries in North America that really focuses on landscape. And this was the cemetery, if any of you ever have a chance to go, it's in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, and it focuses on kind of a landscape approach to cemeteries because it was founded by people who founded the Horticulture Society. It was founded before even landscape architects were a thing. And so this, this place is the kind of inspiration for the kind of work that I hope and the team hopes to bring to this, this environment. So it's really kind of looking at that and also having a realistic understanding of what are the trends in terms of, we are now in the 21st century. So what are the trends of burial? What are the trends of what people are doing? And so what, where do people want, how are, how are things like cremation? That's becoming more of a thing. How do we incorporate that into sort of more naturalistic settings? How do we do all those things? And so I think that's the, the piece that I think gets me most excited interesting interested is creating a place that doesn't look like actually mountain view but something that looks quite different that is really responsive to kind of nature and the environment and it is a place where not only will people go to commemorate their loved ones but it's also for families to go to enjoy nature for bird walks and to really be kind of a focus as a natural setting that also happens to have um you know, uh, landscape and, and monuments and memorialization. Go ahead. Just for my information, what is the estimated ratio of trees versus tree space once it's all done? Uh, we haven't gotten to that. We have not gone to that level of granularity. We're still at a concept level. So I think that we could certainly look at that. But we do have a ratio, and I do have a plan that does show kind of most of Prospect Park will be preserved as you know and love it. This is only less, it's about 19 acres that will be kind of developed as a landscape green cemetery. And so that's, that is, and then of that ratio, we can certainly look at what percentage is going to be open and what percentage is not going to be open. Yeah, let me just stop you here. It's a sensitive topic. We like to go and visit my father-in-law who is in the uh, existing park. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On the other hand, Earth has created us and the delicate balance of everything. So we have a lot of wildlife there in the back. Uh, once we take out all those trees, we get that ratio that is not determined yet. All those animals will be displaced as well. Uh, was there a consideration when you do the tree studies? What the greater 
Well, we're, we're going to be keeping kind of all the environmental pieces that relate to uh, what animals and, 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 uh, and wildlife will be looking at. So we're not touching any of that area. And I, I will point out that, for example, uh, cemeteries, for example, Mont Auburn and other cemeteries become important migration destinations um, in North America so that it is indeed and it is indeed documented that cemeteries can coexist with nature and become important stopping over for flight paths for birds. And so one of the most important groups at Mont Auburn are the birders. And that's true about not conventional cemeteries, but we're not trying to develop a conventional cemetery, but cemeteries that are much more landscape focused and a green cemetery. Swan Point down in Rhode Island is the same way. And so there is a whole group of cemeteries that are really vital resources for uh, flight paths and for natural environment. That's, that's, that's very key and I think that is very much the current thinking. It wasn't the current thinking, let's say, 50 years ago, but it is very much the way things are going now. Riparian, riparian habitat. I'll show you some slides and I've got some here of, of riparian habitats within cemeteries that are quite successful. So um, anyway, so just to, to start, um, I think this gives us sort of a context map, so you can see in yellow is the uh, existing Mountain View Cemetery, and then you have uh, Prospect Park, and then what we've done is we've superimposed the kind of current concept over the portion of the cemetery that we wish to develop. And so that this gives you a sense of the percentage of opening and closing of trees that we have, you know, you can also see in the in the blue is the the Garden of Remembrance and the old mansion. So everybody and the water tower, so everyone can get a sense of you know kind of where everything is located on the plan. Um, so that's and then to to your point, um, this actually this slide represents exactly the kind of portion of uh, the 19 acres that we are currently and we'll only develop at this point, I think the cemetery, and I think we've developed a plan that I think given current cemetery trends could serve the town of, of, of Shrewsbury for the next 50 to 100 years. And so I, I think, or even in, in you know, dep who knows 100 years from now, the, the way people will be doing interments or burials. And so, but I think that for the next 50 to 100 years, I think this is all that will ever happen in terms of cemetery development for this part of, uh, for, for here, for Prospect Park. Yes. I think so because I think. Yeah. Well. I came out with twenty years. Twenty years. Well, the the but you, what you have to take into consideration are trends in in sort of uh, cemetery trends and how people uh, how sort of you know I'm a baby boomer but Generation X and you know all that is really changing dramatically so that. I would say that Generation Y and Generation X, you know, may not want a whole plot of land. They may want to be buried next to a tree. They want a cremated remain. So, you know, I think that if trends, uh, 20 years ago, the percentage of cremation was less than, let's say, 30%. Now the majority of people get cremated. 60% of all everyone gets cremated for a variety of reasons. And so then you have these cremated remains. And so some people just put them in the closet. Some people forget about them. But if you want to do the right thing with that, you know, there's a book called My Parents Are in the Closets by Ross Chas from The New Yorker. And it's like her parents are in the closet. So, but clearly, I didn't want to do that with my mother. I don't think you want your kids to do that with you. So clearly, you want to find a place, and you, but you want want to find a place that is spiritually, environmentally, and emotionally rewarding. And I think this is what we're trying to achieve here today and tonight. So, so the 19, I think it's 19, no, no, no. That's, that is, the 19 acres is, I think, all we're going to get. That's it. It's only 70 acres up there. No, no, no. You, it's 76.9 acres is what remains. So 19 is what we're, so that, okay. Uh, and so I want to kind of then go through the plan. And so I'm going to briefly step through the plan. So you see, and you'll see red circles at each point in the plan. But what, uh, what we're going to walk you through is, and uh, just to, so south is, is at the bottom, no, north is at the top, Boylston Street's to the left, 
and Prospect Streets to the to the right. And so, what the what the the concept is that, and what the town has requested is they would like to have there's a there's a a sales office and a small parking area for um, for 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 visitors or people who want to have pre need sales or they want to sort of try to think about a place for their loved one. And then there is uh, uh, we mentioned the pedestrian access point by Spring Street. So we're developing a pedestrian access point so that in the future people will be able to walk from the center of Shrewsbury and not have to drive to get to Prospect Park. To the very far top right hand side we've reconfigured a, a parking lot that actually saves, there's a really amazing grove of white pines right across as you enter Prospect Park and so those are all being saved and we're creating a parking area at the just to the north of that that will accommodate, accommodate visitor parking because I've been here well over 12 times and parking is always kind of an issue for the visitors at Prospect Park. But we're also incorporating a small parking area at the cemetery and in addition incorporating roads that can handle you know folks driving on two, two lanes. Uh, so we're creating the visitors area uh, down below, the sales office, a small parking lot. We're calling something the Garden of Remembrance. And just beyond that, for the folks on Merriman, there's a 50-foot buffer between the back of their property and any kind of cemetery development. So there's a, there's a significant and very ample buffer that buffers the folks on, on that southern side of the property. The road then sort of moves up into the into the property and then goes to what we call the gazebo area and that's a area that we've designated as a potential place for a gazebo for commemoration where families may gather for remembrance ceremonies for any kinds of activities that they may wish to have and then we have really in terms of the talk about cremation we have most of the area will be kind of a cremation gardens or cremation spaces for cremated remains and then over towards Boylston Street, there's a maintenance building because poor Kevin and the crew at the, really need a, a maintenance building. So this will be closed off to general traffic, but the townspeople will be able to access the maintenance, maintenance facility. And so I will walk you through now. And so here is at the, at the gate, is the, the, does everybody see the red circle? That's your house? <laughs> oh, all right, okay, well that's, all right, okay. Pardon? Sure, yeah. Yeah, the current entrance is, and let's see if I do this, and uh, well, the cursor is not, yeah, uh, go, there you go. Prospect Park is up here. Oh, no, it's done. No, no, I'll, I'll help you. I'll do it. I'll do it. I can get up. I need the exercise. I have a no. The current ent entrance of Prospect Park is right there. It's right there. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's going to be part of all of this, all that section. Well, only that, well, the, part of that, what that is, is that it's actually providing for, actually, it's not part of the cemetery. It's an improvement area so that people can better access Prospect Park. Because right now, as you know, you know, cars get backed up there. So that's not that's not going to be cemetery. That's that's park. But the town is engaging us to do a, a better entrance and a more defined and you know entrance there. On the so. Street on that map, yeah. What's on Bolston Street right there? Yeah. The red, that's, that's not Boylston. That's actually Prospect okay. Street. So that's well, east. On the, le uh, on the left hand side, that's Boylston Street. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, it's a diamond, yeah. That, that's Where just. Is that so that is um, across the street from the existing cemetery entrance. So you see that you come up here. I'll, I'll just, uh, so this is, all, this, is all, this is all Mountain View Cemetery right here. The wetlands are right up there. So Mountain View Cemetery is right here. And then you get out of Mountain View Cemetery and people come in. And so this is kind of right across the street. So the idea is it has a relationship with the existing cemetery. So Carl, how big is the maintenance building? Oh uh, boy, I don't have my the ma uh, what did he, what do we have in the cost estimate? Is it twenty by twenty? It's not very. It's not very big. Little, might have been a little bigger than that. It was with two uh, garage bays. Uh, which one, one will be for a backhoe and, uh, and the other will be for other equipment and yeah. potentially a small little equipment room. Yeah. It's not very large. Now, they they need a maintenance. Yeah. Is that open to the public? No, no, that'll be closed off. Yeah, that'll be closed, that'll be closed off. off. Yeah, that'll be closed off. That's just for, for the folks in town to be able to use it. That's it. The town employees. 
Yeah. DPW. Well, that maintenance building be in public view, drive them by. Well, no, because it's going to be tucked behind the trees there. So we're going to make sure that you can't see that maintenance building. But I think that maintenance building's probably, I'd say, at least over 50 feet back from the road. So. Usually in the cemetery, they kind of hide the, the maintenance building from public view. Right. Well, the public won't be entering. Well, the public won't be entering the cemetery from that point. So they're not going to be seeing the maintenance building because they're not entering from that entrance. No, that I understand, but I drive by there. I see. Well, we're not, uh, so the, the we're, I, I, you know, my goal is not to make you, you to, to not do a kind of uh, a, a kind of a unattractive maintenance building. I think it'll be something that's sort of quiet and steps back. It's not, it's not going to be a store of thumb. It should be something fairly attractive. Um, so getting to the entrance. And so the top left, what? Oh, yeah. Go back. That's just existing vegetation. That's not okay. okay that's yeah. We're not at, yeah. That's just existing vegetation. That's all. I'm sorry. What? Oh, oh, okay. All right. So to the top left hand side is actually the historic view of of the Whittall Estate. So that was the old estate, and that was the entrance. And so the entrance pretty much is the same. And so uh, our proposal and part of the the project for this is to really kind of restore those gates and to also create new gates down uh, at the corner by Spring Street. So sort of something that really kind of is evocative of already the history that's already there. I think that that's part of our approach is to really enhance the history of this really terrific property and piece of land. And so that's that's why we've looked at these and show you. And my, my sense is uh, and my, my goal is to uh, create something that, st because there is already an existing stone wall along the Prospect Street. So uh, that image to the to the right of the historic Whittall Estate fo photograph would be, if we could achieve something like that, I think that we'd have a real success as a very quiet entrance to this landscape cemetery. How many parking spots are you talking about near, near, near the Spring Street entrance? I think, I think we, I said six. I'm, I am not into building park. I am, we're parking for staff for family to come and visit, to, to talk to the staff. But the way the roadway width is designed is in such a way that most, most good cemeteries don't have parking lots. You park along the road, and then cars pass you. So, and, and the road is going to be, uh, it has a, a, a certain width. I think we're, we're saying about 16. And then it's going to have a shoulder on two sides, which is a green shoulder that will be reinforced. So the cars will be able to pull over to the shoulder, and other cars go by. I'm, I'm not interested in making a, you know, a highway through the middle of this so place. They can drive that circle. Yes, they can drive that circle. Yeah, and also emergency vehicles and fire trucks and all that can do the circle. It's very difficult to get to come out of Marion to pull onto Prospect Street. Oh, it's, yes. I mean, I think the town is looking at that whole intersection as well. Not part of this study. But I think the goal was to create a pedestrian access to the park from the center of town. And so this project will accomplish that and accomplishes additional better parking up at Prospect Park. Um, so the... Uh, Oh, oh, all right, okay. So ad adjacent to um, the uh, the sales office, uh, we've we, we've decided we, we decided to create something called the Remembrance Garden because the notion in landscape and in and really in landscape cemeteries is that you don't drive up and you're just seeing tombs right as you you come up, but you have a moment of sort of going from the profane to the sacred, which is the space that you're trying to create. So we're creating this thing and we're, we're create, uh, we want to create a, a, a place that we want to define as a remembrance garden. So you can see there's some Im images of what this potentially could be. It could be sort of the image of the small garden uh, on the top uh, left hand side or, or on the top right hand side this is a garden from swan point cemetery in rhode island it could also be a meditation garden if people wanted to have it be more meditative or it could be a more enclosed garden but but there's a notion of this is a space that if people are going to talk about where they're going to bury their loved ones this is an opportunity for them to have a quiet space a space with nature a kind of a garden-like space that is healing because the point of th all of this is to make this a healing place 
for people who were poor kind of uh, uh, or saying goodbye to their loved ones or, or memorializing their loved ones. And so, you know, a cemetery should be a place that really reinforces healing and not be just a place that, that feels uh, uh, challenging or, or unattractive or not beautiful. So that's the Remembrance Garden. Uh, and then um, the, the next uh, lot is the cremation garden. So I want to show a series of images of cremation gardens. And these are gardens where you can inter people in urns and cremated remains. In fact, my mom is in one of them. And, and it's a, I picked a beautiful place for her. And so these cremation gardens are terrific because they allow us to preserve the trees around the garden. And so um, you see here, uh, top uh, left-hand side, the, the bottom uh, left-hand side is, is Fern Hill, and that's where, where the cremation garden where my mom is. And you can see it's really a landscape. It's a garden. It's not a, a place full of tombstones, but very much a garden full of trees. Yes? What if you have a married couple where one is cremated and one is buried? Ugh. They want to be next to each other. Well, we could certainly. So if you the top right-hand side is another cremation garden at Swan Point. And so this one has options for both full body burial and cremated remains. And so you see, and there's the lots, you see those little markers, those are lots, and that's all set within kind of a, already a mature landscape. And then what uh, a Swan Point has done is created these tablets. And so on the tablets is where you write the names of the people, but you're, you're not creating monuments. You're not having to dig and you know destroy trees, but you are, your name is on a tablet that remembers you. So that's, that's an example of that. And there's another kind of landscape type a space that would be a cremation garden. And I think for me, that was the solution for my mom. And I think that for many of us, we'd rather be in a place like that, that is feels like a garden rather than a sad cemetery. Um, and then the next area we wanted to create is the gazebo area in the circle. And I think the inspiration for here was at Swan Point, and this is another cremation garden. And I think, I, I think this is a gathering place. And, it was wonderful when I went to visit this um, several years ago, and I was there just this past winter. I think you see an image on one of the image boards. Um, and so those are cre cremation graves, and there's the gazebo. And I think when I was there taking this photograph several years ago, what was great was that there was a young man just underneath the gazebo reading. So he felt sort of welcomed enough at this place that it wasn't just a place for the dead, but it was a place for enjoyment and a place to kind of really commune with nature. And so. I think this would be in the gazebo area. I think we would encourage uh, the construction of a gazebo that could be a place for people to go by themselves and kind of read, or if a family wants to gather uh, at, at an interment ceremony with uh, you know the uh, the uh, uh, you know the clergy, this would be a place to do that. And so this becomes a spot for to do that in a dignified place, in a place that really preserves the trees and really preserves the landscape in a, in a major way. And, and that, but there are also markers if people want a marker. So you have options that have markers if you want to have markers, or there's options without markers that just shows there's a slab and you're just, your name is on a slab. So it's, I think the goal of the plan here is to make it flexible so that it serves a variety of different people's needs, whether they want a traditional marker, they don't want a traditional marker, but to give us the flexibility to develop a plan that will really take us to the next 50 to 100 years as, as trends in cemeteries change. Um, uh, and so this is then uh, the kind of focus on cemetery design. And so those green dots that, that look like peas are all those are those are all the the, the 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 preserved trees that we plan to preserve as part of this development. These are significant trees. Uh, Davy Tree catalog, cataloged a lot of dead trees, a lot of invasive trees, ash trees, which are in decline. So there's a significant amount of that already. And so the approach is to really clear out and 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 get rid of the invasives, the disease, and the dead trees, and really just focus on keeping the healthiest trees and doing cemetery development. And so cemetery design, I think, is something that I've been really passionate about for a long time. I, I'm not sure that shit comes through or not. But I think the approach uh, I have is really 
and so uh, cemeteries that uh, kind of are more about burying people within the trees. Um, at the bottom right hand side is an image of Lakewood Cemetery in Minneapolis where they closed a road and they created, but this is a, 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 a cemetery that is a landscape forward approach. At the bottom left hand side, that's, um, that's a, 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 a cemetery in, um, in Belmont, Massachusetts. And what you can see is that the burials take place really in within the trees. And so the idea is to bury folks within the trees and amongst the trees and not sort of clear things out. As you can see in the top right hand side, that's being done at Swan Point very effectively. Or on the left hand side at Swan Point in this other area that shows really just that's a full body, two full body burials took place there, but they've, they're amongst the trees and amongst the rhododendrons. And, you know, again, it's a different approach that really focuses on really enhancing the natural experience of, of the place. So do you say the circles represent one tree? No, a cluster of trees. Oh my, no, there's, there's, there's some of them. We can't, not just one. I mean, there's a grove. And I think these folks said, you know, these groves, uh, this grove of red maples, yeah. these grove of pines, you know, there's, a, there's so the, not one tree. It's that so the scales. Circles represent a cluster of trees. Yes, yeah. Uh, and then one of the other trends in cemetery uh, design is I, I showed you an example of the tablets, but some of the other things that are happening so that we're not creating a cemetery that's full of tombstones is communal monuments. And I think communal monuments are really successful when you have a really powerful and beautiful landscape. So at the very at the top right hand side, that is a communal monument and the folks on the uh, to the left hand side of the communal monument at, at Swan Point are all just cream are full body burials but there's no markers and their names are on that communal monument at the far left hand side this is a communal monument at Halcyon Path at Mount Auburn and so there are no tombstones there are, are benches that have names on them there are the there are monuments where everyone is buried underneath that grass path that you see to the to the to the right of the communal monument, and then their names go on this this the steely that's there, uh, and then another communal monument is this one that's set amongst uh, older settings, which is a more modern approach where names are engraved. Um, the, the, the inspiration for this is a sculpture of an angel with wings that I'm not sure you can see in this image, but the names are all engraved along that granite line that you see in the grass. And the people are full-bodied burial on either, on either side. And so these are trends that actually allow for commemoration in a cemetery, but don't create kind of the cluttered, you know, effect that many conventional cemeteries have. Uh, another thing that I think we were really um, kind of took very seriously is uh, the stone walls. There are lots of beautiful stone walls at, uh, at Prospect Park. And so one of the things that I think we would, I think is, is a natural, is to really kind of sort of engrave and sandblast or put plaques on the stone walls to commemorate someone. So you can see that on the bottom right hand side, that's a stone wall with a plaque and that is a burial spot. And I think that that's, a, I think to me speaks very powerfully about kind of the kind of a very much a New England vernacular, a kind of a landscape that really speaks to the place that is very much in tune to and balances the notion of commemoration with um, the notion of kind of keeping the landscape intact. Um, uh, to the a more formal stone walls at the top right hand side, and so that's a that's a stone wall that has names are engraved on the stone wall, and then people are buried in front of the stone wall. But I think, from from Mountain View, because you have all these terrific walls throughout the site, I think what I would really want to see is people buried either in front of the stone wall or names and or names engraved, uh, sandblasted on larger stones in the stone wall. And I think that that's a real opportunity. I think. Part of what we discussed is we want to make that as an, an offer because to see if people are interested. I think it's clearly people are interested in other places, but I think that this is something that might be appealing to folks who want to end up at Prospect Park. So the circles are trees. The light green is grass. Meadow. So you see this here. See that? See the see the wall on the um, see that stone wall with the top with the sort of and what I like about that slide is it you, you it shows that there's parts that are going to be mowed and parts are going to stay meadow. And so the idea is to really do a balance of mowing and meadowing. 
And that's, that, I think, is what is really crucial in terms of the, the space. It's not all going to be, you know, clear cut. In fact, um, my, uh, we've identified, if you notice, there's a slight yellow tinge on some of the, of the, of the green areas that are the, and those are really thinking about enhancing and creating more metal-like areas. Okay. What can you tell me about that? I think it's, I think it. Yeah, when, when the survey crews came back through to locate the trees that we mm -hmm. had assessed, they, they had to put a dot on it to make sure that they accounted for every tree uh, that we had assessed. So in order for them to keep themselves straight. Uh, they, it's not every single tree, so they're not, the pink is not always accounted for. The pink, was it a pink ribbon or pink? No, it's a pink. Painted dot. Painted dot. Painted dot yeah. It right. should be every tree that's over eight inches, and it should be, and that it wasn't us that did that. That is the survey crew that came through after us because they shot every tree with a total station so that they could have a very accurate map. And in order for them, I, I, I think, in order for them to know what trees they have done, they sprayed them. An account. Yeah, it's a count. Yeah. Account. It's like literally all the trees have been counted. I mean, that's what's, I think. Pardon? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. This is Mary, by Marymount? Mary, Mar 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 sorry. Mary, I'm sorry. Well, no, not there. If you look at the plan, we have a 50-foot buffer where the intent is to, to really replant that area with trees and with, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's going to be replanted with uh, native, I mean, that, that, that area has a lot of invasives. And so I think that area is really going to have to be replanted with, you know, uh, native rhododendrons that grow quite tall and are evergreen and native trees. That there's no, there is no planned development or anything within a 50-foot buffer of your property line. Well, because that was part of the accounting. Okay. It's not because they're going to be removed. It's just part of the assessment process. Um, and so another piece that I think is, um, is, is terrific here at Mountain View is that you have water. And you have, uh, you have a, there's a, there's a, there's a, you have a, a repairing environment. And so, in fact, the image on the top right-hand side was taken um, three years ago when I first uh, started visiting the site. And that, that is an area that is a repairing envir environment. And as a counterpoint to that, on the left-hand side is called, uh, is a place called Consecration Dell at Mount Auburn. And this is uh, an important repairing environment. This is where people go to look at salamanders and peepers and and this this area is quite one of the oldest parts of Mount Auburn and as you can see it is it's not a crystal clear lake and it's and I don't think we should expect that or want that but it is kind of a place that people go to visit and really uh, it feels a kind of very welcoming and peaceful and quiet and beautiful sort of landscape that really incorporates kind of the native topography and geography and plants of the area. And so that, that is the goal here in terms of the not <coughs> manipulating the wetlands, not touching them, but really kind of enhancing them so they can look more like or can be better maintained and, and be like Consecration Dell. Uh, you clearly already have that um, and just sort of trying to increase that feel. At the bottom image is also from, this is from Swan Point, and this is where they're kind of looking at a water feature that also manages to kind of, you know, trap and collect and, you know, and manage the kind of the, uh, the, the, the runoff. And so I think this is something that we're going to be part of uh, how we're going to work uh, with this landscape here and really kind of, uh, do it in harmony so that it doesn't cause problems. Um, and I think that might be my last slide. Can I, I'm sorry, can I get back please? I can go back, sure, for sure. Yeah, you can tell me where you want me to stop. So I'm just curious, because we walk up there. Yeah, of course. Walk. Yeah, yeah. On this map that you have here. Here, let me, I can go, I can go up, you can talk. Which ones are still going to be 
Well, I, 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 I mean, it's really hard to orient. Because when you walk Yeah, in, so in. when you come into Prospect Park, you, we you come in come up that way, further. Right? No, yeah. we don't come in the main entrance. We come oh, in you come the right, right, the right where there's a neighborhood and, and Oh, okay, so let's go back. All right, so that would be, let me go back to that. Hold on. No, somewhere, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that's the wa it's the water. Let me just get to that slide. Here it is. Okay, wait. Ooh, sorry. Just to make sure everybody was awake. All right. So you come in. Uh, this is this is the existing entrance, and you probably come in along the service road right up here. Yeah. Yes. Which is all wetlands. Nothing's going to take place there. Okay, but but then you know what? So there's the, so there the current road up to the water. Channel. Oh, right up, right along here. That's not going to change either. Okay, so we. Okay, so that trail still. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. It's not none of that's going to change. All everything is just to the. But the trail that goes down and that goes down through that area. There's a well, trail. Well, we're going to yes, and so yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna we're, we have we do have stone walls there. So we're gonna we're gonna keep the stone walls. I just went and spent five minutes talking about how great the stone walls are for burial. I think we're obviously gonna keep all the stone walls, but we're gonna have to probably modify some of those trails. But the intent has always been, and that's why here, can everybody see me pointing? That's why we created this trail because this is already an existing trail, and we thought, well, let's create that trail and let's actually connect it up to Spring Street so that we can actually, you know, have people have safe access to the park. Yes. We were talking about water features earlier. Yes. And one of the water features goes through through your cremation garden because. Yeah. Here we go. The whole hillside drains down. Let me get to that image. Hold on. And, uh, You're saying right. Are you saying right? Uh, so, uh, the cremation gardens here, the, the wetlands, this is the wetlands right over here. Do you see that line? Those are the wetlands. The cremation gardens really kind of away from the wetlands. Yeah, sure. Read about it. Yeah. There's a little boardwalk. Yeah, but yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Swampy, and sure. The water runs down. That's right. In this direction, and right down here, there's a little mud uh, puddle. It's down here, or up down over there. I thought there's, there's, a, there's there. another one that runs along. Yeah, the yeah. And uh, so my my concern, is, I, I walk in this area with Mark. With you sure? Parents. Yeah, which, which nobody apparently has done. But, uh, this is very muddy. Right. The sea of mud. Right. And right. I, I'm, I'm only concerned that you're, 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 you're only cemetery to turn, turn into mud. Turn into a mud bath. No, well, we're not. We're not trying to create. So, so number one, so that's why it's really where it's cremated remains. And so I think that we're not impacting. We're not doing full body burials or anything like that there. They, here we're just trying to put small urns, you know, into the into the into the woods and so that's it but i think that the we are creating a road that actually will be it's a it's not a very wide road but it's a road so that it doesn't get money so people can walk around and we need the access to all that but i think that that's why we really said very almost very little of this is actually going to get impacted by you know any kind of conventional burial and in fact none in fact it's all going to happen ricardo yeah mountain view cemetery yeah. It's full of water. Yeah. What about the new section? Is that going to be full of water? Well, we actually dug test pits in 2020. And so we did test pits. We did four test pits. Well, we, we did four test pits here, but we did test pits throughout the entire cemetery. And so there were some areas of high water, but we're not, we're not, that area, those areas were not, you know, going to be getting into burial. We're only going into areas where we can actually, you know, you know, be, do any kind of did you test the area for the birds? Yes. And how far down did you go? Well, I don't have that data with me, but it was, a, I, I, I can look at it. I have, to, I have to look at it. But we certainly looked at high water, the kind of soil, and where the, the, the low water line was. 
this. And clearly over here, we knew that, so that was, that's no surprise. But in this part of the, the cemetery, mm -hmm. there was less of an issue. But it does <clears> get quite wet there along Prospect, that trail that runs along Prospect. This one right here? Yeah, it gets really wet there. It gets really wet in the spring, okay. <laughs> it gets wet in the spring. Okay. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, the, uh, the vision that you created, that you're presenting, is, is very nice. I like it. Uh, from Germany, the cemetery, cemeteries look very different than uh, the other area uh, with just gravestones. So they look more like uh, you're presenting here. And I, I really like, like this. Um, but along with the, uh, I'm also concerned or thinking about the impact. Um, there is a lot of water runoff, which you just <laughs> talked about. Yes. We also have the water well up top on the hill that yeah. was 300 feet down yeah. at least. Now, what groundwork do you have to do in order to prevent leachate of uh, of uh, toxic substances to get into the into the water and transport it away with the uh, along with the water flow the surface water or even worse getting down into the groundwater level uh, whether it's uh, bacteria or viruses did, did uh, is there any okay I, do you want to answer that is that I'll answer the first part. Okay, sure. So the existing well at the top of the hill, up by the tanks, is not a, a part of our water supply. That is just a test well that was done several years ago when the town wanted to put potential water supply up there, and it was actually defeated at town meeting to use that as a water source. Uh, we will look at that for potential for irrigation, for or for not so much irrigation, but for water source for the cemetery. And at the same time, we'll be able to provide water for the uh, Friends of Prospect Park at the top of the hill. But there is a well, it's that, actually it's down about 600 feet, uh, and the water level is down about 200 feet. Well, at that location. Significant water flow in the hillside. You oh, notice yeah. that when you put up an addition to the house, uh, once the excavator started digging, it filled up right away. Yep. Was that is still more surface water that seeps into the ground and goes through the clay soil. It's, it's an enormous amount of water that flows there. And then you have also the groundwater level. So even though the well is inactive, if I understand this correctly. It, it, was, it was actually just a test well. It was never used as a well. But there's still a potential that uh, yeah, pathogens get into the groundwater. And you talked earlier about it, you want this to be a sanctuary for people. Mm -hmm. So what additional measures were considered to deal with this? Well, there's it's sort of, it's unfortunate. We all, we have fillings, we have pacemakers. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah, no, I, I. Even if you get cremated, all this stuff is deposited somewhere. <laughs> well, so, um, I, I, I don't know how gory people want me to get here, but uh, if you're cremated, it sort of goes through a sifter. So all the sifted, all those pieces like your fillings and the pacemakers, all that goes out. That does not put part of cremated remains. And cremated remains are not a source of any kind of contaminants or anything like that. What's a source of contaminants, and again, I apologize, is the traditional embalming where people are pumped full of formaldehyde and there's concrete boxes that people are put in. That's what's really toxic. So they have to be put in a concrete box so that if when things start to leak, the formaldehyde doesn't go anywhere. But that's a conventional burial and that's and that is like that is not a cremated remain. And so if some people want to have a concrete box and put a concrete box in there, go right ahead and you can go in there and be embalmed. But you know, I you know, I didn't embalm my mother for that reason. I mean that's that's the real kind of trend is that people are saying, why are we pumping our dead full of all these toxic chemicals? What's the point? They're dead already, and they're going to well, decay. The so thing is, The thing is, um, uh, 
It got it's a good us. question. I, I, it just doesn't stop by putting us into the soil. You know, if something happens to our... Uh, right, but I would say that, but, yeah. We have also the natural decomposition, if I recall us correctly, is about 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 liters per kilogram of body weight that can transform or will transform into bacteria and viruses. And there are also some fungi that could actually... Yeah, and I think the, tra if I recall this correctly, the travel distance in the worst case can be uh, 300 feet, and it can, uh, some I, I, rather quickly, but others can survive I, for a long period of time. So with that water flow there, Going right into the deep <coughs> roof, I I'm I I I, under, I understand because well I, so it's funny so the the reason places like Mount Auburn became and, and you're kind of hitting on a kind of a very historic point the, the reason that we cr people created Mount, Mount Auburns is because they they hark back to Paris in the 19th century or uh, in the early eight, uh, late 18th century there's a, a a famous old cemetery called Père Lachaise in Paris and the reason that was built was because back then people didn't understand diseases you know yellow fever all this kind of stuff that that did that weren't related to debt to the dead decaying people so they had this whole notion of these miasmas that were causing people to die i mean there's there's stuff in the historic record so that they said, okay, well, in Père Lachaise or at Mont Auburn, and the reason Mont Auburn was created was because there were t uh, 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 typhus infections throughout Boston, and so they went to Cambridge and did a kind of it in a rural place. Same thing in Paris at Père Lachaise. They went to the I forget which arrondissement, which is no longer rural, by the way, and they created Père Lachaise there. So there was that notion, but it's a kind of a 19th century idea. We we now know today that you know once the body starts decaying. I mean, there's there's very there's virtually no evidence of toxicity coming from people's remains, unless of course they've been embalmed and it's formaldehyde. And then you know now we're talking then the kind of sealed them in the coffin with concrete. Kind I, of I don't thing. want to get anybody nervous, but uh, I'm happy to share a more recent research report on that. Okay, well, we could, I'll give you my business card. I'm happy to do it because it's... It's getting more traction worldwide where, we, where they're saying we have to do, pay more attention to this. Okay, well, I'm happy to give you... If you send it to me because... It's a historical review. Um, anyway. Yes? Could I ask a variety of questions pertaining to uh, more of the uh, infrastructure here? Sure. Uh, at the uh, area by the office, and <coughs> yes. you set up parking for maybe up to six cars. Yes. Uh, there is, at that corner of the uh, area, is just a pedestrian entrance, not a vehicle entrance. Is that what I'm No, saying? no, no. There's going to be both. There's um, going to be both. both. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I could, I could sort of walk up there. <clears throat> okay. I, I heard you say the a no, safe... There's Pedestrian so this, see, this is the this is the pedestrian entrance here. The lower one. Yeah, so the lower one. So that's the pedestrian entrance that then connects to the existing path, and then this is the vehicular. There is a okay. Yeah. There is a vehicle entrance yeah. there. Uh, the main entrance to the the current main entrance to the park, uh, and and we you mentioned the uh, stone walls and the stone pillars. Mm -hmm. Are you proposing that those pillars are demolished no. or rebuilt? Restored. Restored. Yeah. Okay. And um, the park propo the uh, proposal for uh, cemetery uh, as you enter as you enter the park at, at the main entrance as we know it today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the area to the right of the current parking lot? The current parking lot yeah, yeah. To, be, to be burial area? No, no, that's going to be just no. That's not part of this project. Oh, okay. That's uh, in fact, and we've moved uh, <clears throat> the earlier scheme. I don't know who was who was around in, in 2021. We had initially a parking here, but I, yes, we wanted to save all those white pines, Thank and so God. we moved okay. the pines. Yeah, those white pines are gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. So that the uh, so that the it, is this other area. Looks like a kidney or something. Uh, is that this a kidney here? Is this yes, a that's proposed? the part. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so it's vehicle access right. for the entrance right. to that. Yep. 
And is it then gated yeah, off? It'll, at that yeah, point? it'll be gated off. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be parking right. and a circular. Well, yeah, we wanted there. parking so people could get in and then because right. right now they sort of stack here and it gets <coughs> really hot. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's about eight eight car max. And, and, and I just wonder, like, I'm hoping that, like, if this is built that people can access this walking, why wouldn't you walk there? It, exactly. Yeah. Uh, how soon do you anticipate? Uh, Construction in that area between the main, the current entrance, and the new proposed parking area. You're saying this is out here? Uh, no, the same. The, the, uh, once again, the uh, the prospect park. Oh, the prospect park. park see, that's, yeah, yeah. This is a park. Yeah. How soon do you anticipate uh, disrupting this? Well, I forgot. So that's sort of up to. So provided we get through town meeting, yeah. uh, the plan is to have full design construction documents by this fall, okay, which would start be a, a spring of 24 construction begin. Okay. Since we don't have a contractor, obviously at this point, we don't know what their phasing would be okay. um, when we get to that, to that uh, part. But we expect it'll be a 18 to 24 month project for okay, whatever we start. For the, for the entire? For the entire, yeah. for, for, for what we're showing you here, yep. And, and during that construction, uh, what, will, what would the access to the park be? Uh, so, so our goal would be to keep access as much as possible. Yeah. Like not change, not change, um, you know, not prevent people from going into the park. You may not be able to go to the side where the cemetery is being built, sure. but the park side from that, uh, you know, that eastern side of that roadway, we would expect to keep as open as possible. Other than maybe the area for the new parking i think that's uh, that's where i think at that point the construction documents the, it would be kind of working with the, 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 the awarded contractor to develop kind of a phasing and staging plan yeah. so that it's very clear like what are you kind of where are you putting your construction fence to kind of control access while you're building pieces and then you're taking it down and sort of and that's really the kind of that that process that takes place in terms, and with respect to construction but there there are a number of people here who are uh, members of the Friends of Prospect Park. Sure, yeah, you're a great group. And um, um, a number of us right here in this corner. Oh, and uh, so uh, we're, we're currently, uh, yes, you are, we're acquainted with some. And, uh, and so we, uh, we're contemplating our schedule for the year and, and, and our work plans for the following year. And uh, it, it would be important for us to know what kind of areas uh, we would not have access to uh, right. would right. be uh, right. yeah. uh, uh, off limits uh, right. Right. Uh, during during sure. some of the yep. tank construction. There was a hard hat area we couldn't go in that right. area, and and, th and that sort of uh, <coughs> issue. So that uh, at least for this year, we have pretty much full access to the area that uh, we've been accustomed to working in. Oh, for sure. And yeah. and then <coughs> perhaps a portion of next year. Right. Uh, and it sounds like you're planning on keeping most of it accessible for us. Yeah. For sure, you guys are doing an amazing job. We're trying. Yeah, and if, if we and this and if this project happens, you'll get water up here so you don't have to haul those five hundred gallon water tanks. Imagine what that'll be like and what a game changer that'll be for the garden. Yes. In terms of transforming this, uh, you, you are talking about uh, tree removal. Um, is this a continuous flow or will they be stored somewhere intermediately because you have to stack all the trees that you want to take out there, right? That's, well, that's, a, that's what we often in the business is called means and methods. And so this is sort of something that we're going to have to work with to select. We're, you know, we're not even, like I said, this is still conceptual, work, yeah. but this is a means and methods conversation that has to take place with the contract. Like, where are you going to store the stuff? Where are the trees going to go? That's all, that's all. I mean, it also it. depends which equipment you can actually bring in there. You right. can have those right. trucks that grab the tree, tilt it sideways. I mean, you know, I, I guess. Seeing we'll, those in action. Yeah, so I guess. Go ahead, yes. I think it's probably more for Keith than Jeff. Um, the, the town did a study uh, around Spring Street, Marion, Prospect recently. Uh, I submitted a thing. Uh, just anecdotally, the average speed limit is probably roughly 45 miles an hour on Prospect. We're a little faster than probably 140. Um, but are you going to do anything to modify Prospect Street with an entrance there, a turning lane, or 
Would you put traffic control measures on Merriam and Prospect? So, so first, the ac we actually did a speed in the an informal speed study, and the actually average speed was 35. I just to so, so, but to ju just for that, the, the one problem that we're having of w doing any widening on Prospect Street, the right of way is very narrow, and that's is a, a it makes it very difficult to do too much because obviously I know sidewalk has been an issue for a very long time. The road is only 33 feet wide. The, the right of way is only 33 feet. So the one part of why we wanted to put some sort of walkway in was to, right. to help alleviate that. But, but we will look at, as the part of the design of the entrance, they'll look at the entrance. It won't be a turn lane because yeah. there's so little volume into the cemetery. Uh, it, So was that the one that had the speed number? Yeah. So, so that, was, that was done by the police department, and that is a, a, uh, a warning thing to sl have people slow down. <laughs> Engineering did a separate one, which they put it on a pole, which I'm hopefully nobody knew it was there. And it's, <laughs> and it's along the straightaway, and it's just a small little camera in which we can get, get the data. Uh, those usually are much more accurate because police, right, you see that and you tend to slow down anyways. When we did ours, it was 35. I will warn you that I will not do a traffic study on Prospect Street, a true one. And I think I've said, I don't know who I've said this, and I'm sure there's somebody here that I said it to. The reason being, if I do a true tra traffic study, I have to take the 85th percentile, and that has to be the speed, and that can't be reduced. So, so but I will say that we've done speed limit, we've done them throughout the town. We've done them on a bunch of different streets, South Quinsig, Holman, uh, Memorial Drive, uh, Maple Ave. We have actually found the average speed is the posted speed in those locations. Some of them where they're thickly settled and they're supposed to be 30, that's probably 35. The towns uh, um, decided that instead of posting those roads, it's better to just post it as thickly settled. Therefore, the speed should be 30. If we post it, it's probably 35 or 40. Did you also, um, do you have historical data, fairly recent historical data about the frequency of traffic that goes into the old cemetery section to estimate <coughs> what will be the additional traffic volume that has to funnel through that intersection? Hmm. I mean, I, Justin's now at the cemetery every day, and I don't, is? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a high volume of traffic uh, coming in out of the cemetery. I've, unless there's really a burial ceremony along that main drag, like in section M and N, that's where you'll have cars parked along the roadway. So it might make turning in and out of the cemetery a little bit more difficult. That could back up traffic. But, I mean, there's usually less than 10 cars in the cemetery at any given time. It's not a, a tremendous volume. When you say at any given time, is that instant or is that over uh, So, you know, I drive throughout the cemetery frequently, whether I'm going out to, you know, mark out a grave or to show a family member to a grave site. I would say, you know, from my office, which is closer to the fire headquarters, going down to the bottom end, you know, from that distance, going the entire distance of the cemetery, total 10 cars yeah. throughout the cemetery. Yeah, I was just thinking conceptually, we were working, my wife and I, if we would go to the cemetery, we'd probably do this on our way home, or maybe in the morning. Other folks have other times to go there. We go also on the weekends, okay. but... Um, but the increased traffic that is going on the volume on 140 at times is horrendous. And uh, if I now imagine that we would want to go shortly after we come home or on our way, there's already a backup. So, and uh, this lady said earlier, it's quite challenging sometimes to get in and out of the roads there. 
is there any plan of mitigating this somehow or changing the center somewhat into a round circle? Or will this remain this, this so bottleneck that was the traffic lights? So, so you have, you have the, uh, yeah, we don't own there. we don't own the intersection at the center of town. I know. But it's owned by the state. Yeah, no. We actually did, somebody did do a roundabout study there, and it actually takes the entire common. Because there's four lanes yeah. coming in, each, or two lanes yeah. in each direction. No, don't do that. So it's got to be, no. it has to have a center no. island, in, uh, I'd say, and also the funeral home, and also uh, Willie's would be gone. So, <laughs> wait, wait, it, it, no, so no, we no, looked no, at it, and, and it, would, it never went as far as... Uh, a sketch and a doodle and then the waste paper basket. The trouble is the true center, the, the geometrical center of Shrewsbury is actually past that intersection. So I would think 60% of visitors have to travel from the other side over to the uh, cemetery as it is already. And if you increase the volume, this, this small intersection there, especially when the trucks are going, it's a, it's a real it's a real uh, showstopper in terms of getting from the So we are doing a study of the Route 140 and Main Street corridor. So there is a traffic study to try to come up with some solutions. Uh, one of the problems is, if you, as you know, Shrewsbury, <coughs> to go from north to south, there's only really three ways to go. Yeah. To go from the north to go across um, yeah. Main Street. Yes. I mean, it's not a good job providing access from the center of town for, for walkers, but it's probably 500 to 1,000 houses down Prospect Street, 35 miles an hour. I, I see a lot faster cars than that, and I know that's the average, but that's a very narrow road. Where Prospect Park is, is a curving road there. There's no place for people to walk. And I had proposed at some point to put a uh, walkway within the stone wall. It's a town property. It's a, it doesn't have to be a paved thing. It's a mixed use. So we, we, have to, we have a couple things we have to do. So we are looking at, in this one, there will definitely be one from, say, the Spring Street entrance to the, the existing Prospect Park entrance. <clears throat> Future, it's not saying the town can't go further. We do have to worry about ADA code. ADA code does not allow us to do, um, or which is American Disabilities Act, does not allow us to do dirt. It has to be paved. Yeah. Uh, Prospect Park has non-paved paved. That, that's an existing park. That's an existing trail. But if we were to build a new one, we have to meet current standards. Then the issue becomes on the opposite side of the town property, where we get into now in front of individual houses. The only way we can get a sidewalk to fit is we have to start taking property, because it doesn't fit, because the road is so narrow. Sure, but you probably take three, two-thirds of the, pro of the property. I mean, two-thirds of the road from Prospect Park entrance down to where the houses start, you could do that. That's correct. And that get a lot of people off the most dangerous part right, of the road. Right, so we would look at it would probably be behind the wall, because in front of the wall, it, 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 there is, yeah. it just doesn't have the space. Yeah. Is that something in? So we are looking, we're definitely doing it as this first phase, and then we will look at going further. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the thoughtful approach to the Residents on Marion who abut the yeah. southern part of this yeah. new plan. You, you noted the, the 50 foot buffer zone. Yeah. It, so that's all, it's all trees now, right? And you can more or less kind of see through for, you know, maybe a couple hundred feet at mm -hmm. times. Yeah, sure. Trees. Yeah. Is there, and you mentioned that some trees might need to go, they're either invasive or dead or mm -hmm. what have you. So there might be some replanting. Is there anything that's going to go in? you know, along that buffer zone that would prevent someone from just walking through into someone's buffer. Well, I, I think what I'd like to see, my vision would be the kind of the rhododendron maximum, like the native rhododendron, you know, the ones that get, you see, on, you know, around here that, that they're, they're quite tall and big, and those are kind of significant, and those are, you'd have to really bushwhack your way through them. So, so the idea is to supplement, 
take out the take out the invasive trees, take out the dead trees, and then supplement with trees, and then supplement with plantings. And so that I could see that, and it could be, I mean, you could you could we could do rhododendrons, we could do white pines. I mean, we could really really plant that. And the intent is to do that so that those residents aren't impacted. Whether there's a fence or not, I'm not sure that's that's yeah. I'm not sure about that. So that that particular piece of design hasn't really been fully fleshed out yet. No, no. We, I mean, we we know that um, that it's they're kind of you know dying ash trees. There's Nor there's a whole bunch of Norway maples. There's there's a lot of dead trees, and so we know we're going to have to really pay attention to that section and really kind of augment it and really create a, a landscape buffer so that it doesn't impact the residents. We know that. We just didn't get. We're not at that level of granularity yeah. yet. I mean, I think this is a great opportunity to have this back and forth conversation but we wanted to show you where we were because we were in a different place than we were let's say when we had uh, the zoom in february of 2021 i think is when we did that but i wanted to just see the progress we still got w much more to go we're, we're, we'll be having more meetings i mean this is just the start the kickoff uh all right i'm gonna let someone else have a chance but then we can come back it's okay yes Yes, I'm not sure. We're still vetting the breakdown, but yes. And the second question: Did, did, did you say that you hope to have construction plans ready by this Springs Town meeting? The, no, it, it, the the construction draft documents will be ready uh, fall, in the fall, late fall, for a winter mm -hmm. bidding. Yep. For a spring slash early summer construction. Of 24. So, so have, you have, already, have you already funded this 4.4 million? No, that would be on the, the annual town meeting in May. Okay, so first you get the money, then you get the construction plan? Right. So they are, they, the, the engineers and Ricardo BSC is under contract already to provide us up through bidding documents. So but we want to be, we, do, we don't want to miss another construction season because as you know, costs are, are go, continue to rise, the sooner we do it, the better. The other part of that is Mountain View based upon, in my yeah, Justin, if I'm wrong, but I believe that they will be out of space in five to seven years. So if we delay it another year and this really isn't ready until, 28 or 29, then okay, so you are exactly. Dead, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> That's well, it. You can't die. <laughs> it's easy. Just to make sure I understand, the money gets approved this spring. Correct. Yeah. For the construction. For plans. No, for the construction. For, plan, for, for, for plans that you haven't finished yet. For the, right, for the construction, which is not uncommon for any municipal building. No, but the, the, the plans and documents planning and construction documents, it's already funded. We have that money that was appropriated last year. Correct. And the funding in May is for the construction product, the construction cost. So construction of buildings or the actual cemetery? All of the above. So, 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 so very similar to the police station. I'm just worried that you get into one of these situations, like with design and build, where, so, where, where the project gets approved and they design it as they build it. Oh, no, 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 no design build here. So similar to the to the police station, you funded the design first. They got to 60% design drawings, maybe even a little bit less than that, probably 50%. That goes for construction, then they finalize it. There's no sense finalizing it if you don't have the construction funds because you may have to VE stuff, uh, value engineer it later if you don't have enough and every year it gets more and more expensive. So, so they would get to a certain point, we go to town meeting, we get appropriated, now we have a number that we know that we, because we may have to get to later this fall and they say, Ricardo comes back and says, 
I'm at 4.7, and we're going to say, you got to go back and shave off. Shave off right. And we'll say, we'll, we'll remove this, or we'll eliminate this as part of the, the, that, that construction. All right, you're back. Yeah, money, <laughs> okay. money, people always want to know, do I have to pay more taxes? This is a beautiful design. More trees will be left. But it requires also more maintenance. Do you have an idea at this yeah. point, relative to the old section, if that's comparable uh, across the street? It was 10% more in frequent maintenance, 20% more. Well, I'll tell you this much: it'll be much less lawn mowing. That's for sure. Well, so that's that's. I see the guy, you know. He yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, we're not, there's going to be much less lawn mowing on this. I mean, you might have to do more tree work, so these guys might have to do a little more of the maintaining the trees, but I, there's just much less lawn mowing. So that's, I would say that's, I don't, I don't know what the, what the maintenance is right now at Mountain View, but I would say there's significantly less. I mean, this is supposed to be a more natural cemetery. That's the point. It's and not about liability if something falls. Well, out. that's where these guys come in. That's where they're they're the they're the tree lawyers. Okay. So they're. <laughs> <laughs> I give people a lot of credit that are walking right now in Prospect Park because if something falls down, they can bat a lot of apple trees. Okay. Well, thank you for present. Well, thank you for coming and be coming out on a not so beautiful spring night and uh, asking great questions. Well, we could have had it, you know, traffic might have been easier. I apologize for arriving a little late. I showed up at the library instead. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, it's for vis. No, well, it, the intent is it's for these two gentlemen. So is it? Is it going to be marked for, for for staff? No, this is going to be for staff, and then for vis for visitors to the sales office, and you know that kind of stuff. People, I want people to park along. The, like what they're doing right now along Prospect Park is what I want them to do along the whole roads. Well, my hope is that people are going to use the bigger parking lot up there and then, you know, but that's, I mean, I can't, I don't want to pave. I, I am against creating more parking lots than what absolutely bare minimum. So that's, is going to get full. It's going to be the one that everybody's going to go to. Yeah, yeah but then I'm, I'm not going to build a bigger parking lot. I mean, no, we're not, I'm not no. I don't know. So at Mont Arbor, you know what they do? They give you tickets that are like these green tickets. I'll have to bring one of them in. <laughs> they give you these tickets if you park on the lawn, you know, so. What about eliminating that parking spot there and putting the parking by, by, the, by the building side? By the, by the, by the maintenance building? Well, but then you're cutting out more trees along. I mean, it's, a, it's you're cutting, yeah, go ahead. Well, the, the reason the small parking lot is there, that's the sales office. So when you first drive into the cemetery, so in its own, there's six and, and one will be, Justin? Yeah. I think it's going to be difficult stopping people from parking there to go up, to go, but that's kind of the day they find, but. Yeah, I, I, the, I, that's the reason we want a bigger parking lot over here, so that people park there. I understand your point. I'm, I, I don't have a good answer, unfortunately. No, I, 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 I don't want to, you know, it's like if you build it, they will come. Yeah. So I'd rather make it small <laughs> because I don't, you know, you know, I, I don't. I All right, yeah. I think there still will be deer after we're done, by the way. So, might be more, actually, yeah. All those fresh trees to chew on. Isn't there already a sales office now? Uh, at the cemetery? There's a sales closet. Why are you doing a sales yes. one? So, we have a garage adjacent to the fire headquarters. We do have a small office in that building. Right. It's probably no bigger than that room where uh, the SMC crew are, so it's just not a very personable environment, I will say, for families who are coming in and grieving. Um, and it's also logistically challenging. Let me show you a lot of this property and then meet me across the street at the other office to sign the paperwork. Um, 
so both logistically and not aesthetically the best option currently. Will that be the main office? So that would be my, my question. If somebody were working out of that facility full time, that would get to your point. We would have a staff member there who could keep an eye on that parking lot that is really only meant for staff and people visiting the lot sales office. So if unauthorized vehicles are parking there, whether it's a mix of signage or enforcement by PD, yeah. we could keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, one, one final question. Um, with removing trees, they store water, uh, and that's a lot of water, like I said earlier. Do, does the town have to um, dig up the roads to put larger drainage pipes in to deal no. with that excess volume? No, no, we, no. In fact, we're designing this with minimal. No, the, the point is to create sort of kind of areas that, that kind of collect the water. So it's green infrastructure. We are not, we are not putting in, we, we're putting in areas so people can water, you know, if they bring flowers to their loved ones, so they can water the flowers for the loved ones. But we're not creating, you know, giant drainage pipes in here throughout this whole thing. That's not happening. What about moving the little building up to the other parking lot? <laughs> 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 we're trying to keep cemetery and park separate. Yeah, exactly. So that is for the park? And right. Actually, one of the articles on town meeting is to, des is to have a line, what, what cemetery and what's park, and that will be on the park side. That, plan, that plan's right up here, Joe. Oh, is it? It's, uh, the black and white. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up. We're at seventeen point <clears throat> versus the seventy six. Yeah. That's that's this plan here. So this section will only be cemetery. Right. No, I understand. I just yep. feel like I feel like that parking, the little visitor, the little parking lot, is gonna turn into basically a lot of parking. I can tell you. Parking is gonna be huge. If it is as inviting of a space as we're trying to create here, which again is fantastic. I'm going to park as close to where I can just hop out and start walking as mm -hmm. I can possibly park. And if that building is there and has spaces, everyone's just going to go and park here if they're coming in. They're not going to look for a, you know, a, a space further away to park at and then we can walk further to get well, to where they're going. I, I you know, I, I, I'm not sure I completely agree because, you know, at, at places you, you create a, a, a landscape that people can inhabit and people will drive up and they can park, you know, they can park and be by the gazebo or they can buy, be by the kind of wetlands or, you know, it all depends on what do you want to see, you know, I think, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not disagreeing, I, I don't know, but I, I think, I, I, I don't want to... Well, no, but I, I, what I'm sure of is that I, I want to create parking that is absolutely necessary for the function of what town of Shrewsbury needs. And if people need to park, cemeteries, people park along the edges of roads of cemeteries all the time. And is that, is that, is that allowed in this concept? Yes, yes, that, that's the intent. So that's the that's whole intent. Just as it is a Mountain View, that's yeah. the same. Yes. Same. Oh, yeah, 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 you're not. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, you, can, you should, the intent is that you are, should be able to park anywhere along the, 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 along the road. Let me, let me get to that. I think I have a road image here of um, Highland Meadows in Belmont. Let me get, let me see if I got to get to that one. Oh, maybe it's, yeah, right along here at Highland Meadows, and this is in Belmont, and this is a really active, uh, people park all along here all the time. They park, you know, they, they, they park there, and they, they get out, and they, Put a plant a flag and they visit their loved ones and they're there for 15 minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes and then they go and they leave so the so the park that area will be open kind of like the um the cemetery over there or is it dawn dusk or something yeah. yes yeah so anyone could drive in and yeah park, around park along exactly anywhere even if they're not even visiting anyone that's right there, right just, just go and park there yeah that's the point do, do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was here at Highland Meadows, I mean, there was like, I mean, there were a lot. I mean, number one, Highland Meadows is next to the um, uh, Audubon National Sanctuary in, in Belmont. And it's, it's, so there's people hiking all the time, but there's people like very actively using this and just pulling over and just parking. Kind of the, the position of the, uh, this office building, you know, maybe it's the aesthetics why it's there, but if you actually 
took it to the northern side of that entrance road? That was there originally. It's been 2021, that's where we had it. It's, it's, you're putting it almost in somebody's backyard. <laughs> Uh, we did move it. We love the adjustment, but we just don't want to do it. What, 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 right right I don't remember why we changed it. Is it the trees on no. the northern side? Are there trees? Yes. I, I, yes. I don't think All right, we'll take it under advisement. Move it. Okay, you guys move it. All right, okay. I, I, all right. Fair enough. Well, that's yeah, part, part of that challenge, though, is right? I mean, so yeah. consider the, the residents along the river. Yeah, sure. You're pretty much only abutting homes on their end. Yeah. That's the only right. Right. Home yeah. Properties. yeah. So anything that you can do to remove visible right. structure sure. and foot gotcha. traffic that is right. from yeah. someone's property. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I still want to, I mean, I still want to provide pedestrian access. Yeah, absolutely. That, and that's there. That's, you know, there's a path there, so yeah. that's, that's fine. But with all the clearing that's going to happen. I gotcha. So all right, so okay. I mean, I'm, all right, fine. This yeah, is why we're having a meeting. There's parking there, there's building there, there. 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 there, you're just creating more of a reason yeah. to congregate yeah, yeah. all that space. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Move it on the other side. That's pretty close. No, that was dangerous. It is a tough area. That turnout is very dangerous. There's a couple of trees right now that block coming off the area. You see down the side. It's pretty dangerous. Okay, fair enough. The only other thing is one last thing. The buffer from there. You've got to tell eight. When you talk about a fence, a fence would be really good. I don't think a fence is not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want a fence. No, no, no. I don't want a fence. I don't know. We've got stones around here, so we can maybe build something. So, I mean, we're going to pick. My intent is you're going to have white pines and rhododendrons and, like, replacement trees. I feel like you need something more than. I don't want people to come up here. Well, we could repair the wall. Isn't there a stone wall there? Not, not, doesn't look as far as All right. Yeah. So the right corner has changed. The here? It's not the building I'm going to move. The other corner. Right here is the building. Right for the building I'm going to move? Yeah. All right. There's a wall there that's shut. Is it 8 o'clock yet? Somewhere. All right. Yes, sir. Presentation and uh, this map over here. Yeah. Already up the web what? Uh, yeah. These are already up on the web. They are. Okay. Yeah. They're on the town website of the cemetery. I, I sent it to you. Yep. That, I, that, that, you map, you, that black and white map is definitely up on the website. I'll give you the thumb drive. How about that? Actually, you get to keep all these. <laughs> I'm not schlepping them back. <laughs> all right. Yes. My last question. Yes. Uh, the original plans call for a nine-phase project. What? Uh, this uh, this particular area you're talking was supposed to be. Oh 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 yeah yeah yeah. Well, that was it. That was. I understand that, that phase two through nine have been scrubbed. Exactly. And and is is the uh, article that is on May seventeenth warrant. Um, Putting that to bed uh, with the uh, yes. categorizing everything that is not in this particular phase, uh, it, the balance of the park is to remain park. Correct, except for the one area that's already. Well, yeah, for except the water, water except for the two yeah. restrictions. The, the, <clears throat> the area that's been designated for road widening on Coilson Street. Right. And, and the, what's already been deeded to the water department. Right. Correct. Which is uh, about six acres. It, it, and just so you're not late to town meeting, it's the 15th. 15th, not the 17th. 17th. Thank God, Wednesday. I don't have to go. It's, it's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Not a town member, but so. Oh, okay, uh, then. Duly noted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank we you. we got to watch it on TV, though. <laughs> I'm done. Anybody else have any questions or anything? <laughs> yeah, <that's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get paid till eight. It's I'm gonna fine. lock the door. You can get open. Can't get in. <laughs> but I have one question. Sure. Have we determined the size of the monuments? No, I think I think mo that is a fantastic question. Kevin, do you want to say anything? You, Kevin doesn't want to say anything. I, I would love to have monument guidelines here. I really, 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 really I think would. That fall 
falls in the purview of the Parks and Cemetery Commission when we get to that point. I, I want to have my mic on. Thank you. You're creating a beautiful space. Oh, I, oh tell me about it. Oh, oh, you don't have to tell me that. I know that all painfully. I've been there, done that, seen that movie. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with Mall Alden Cemetery, yeah. which I agree, from the United States and the States. Yes. The second would be Newton. Yeah, Newton Cemetery. They're co they're competitors. They hate each other, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. They have a gorgeous pond. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. That's that's the power of that kind of cemetery. You go there not to just mourn the dead, but to also enjoy nature and be there. Yeah. No, I agree. Thank you. So, everyone, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. Um, we we are doing regular updates on the town website in Thunder Cemetery Expansion Project. Um, and also, if you can figure out how to reach us, feel free to email, call us, ask us any questions. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. I read this book. Oh.